Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the YouTube channel. Uh, some of you may have been here already to view some of the recordings from the Android Dev live streams that I do over on Twitch, but this is actually the first video I'm making specific for this YouTube channel. I'm really excited to do this, hoping to make some more content for all of you uh, this summer, so do let me know what you think of this, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it, if you have ideas for other topics you'd like to learn about, and hopefully we can make this happen. Uh, and for the first video, I actually wanted to address something in Jetpack Compose that I think is a really common um, sort of tripping point for a lot of people who are looking at Compose for the first time. It's something that I ran into trying to use Compose, and a number of people have come to me trying to solve this problem, so I'm hoping I can show it off to you and save you some time uh, from going through this problem yourself. So to set the stage for the problem we're going to look at, uh, let's consider the Jetpack Compose code that you see on the screen. You see the code on the left and how it translates to uh, the UI on the right. We have a row of items, which is going to lay things out horizontally. We have a modifier to fill the max width, set some padding on the row. The first item will be text, which is like the task description. And we set a weight modifier on this so that it will fill as much space as it can. And then after that we have a checkbox. We can ignore these required properties of checked and unchecked change. Um, and then we have a modifier on the checkbox, which is to align the checkbox uh, centered vertically. So if we look at our preview over here, we can see that the checkbox is in the center. If we didn't have this, it wouldn't be aligned quite right. So that's the code that we already have. Hopefully you've looked at Jetpack Compose a little bit and you're familiar with this code. Uh, but I want to talk about the problem that a lot of people face with this code. So I'm going to go just into the code view here. And the problem is, let's say we were supplying some additional customization on a checkbox to give it our own branding and styling. And then what we might want to do is put it inside its own composable function so that it can be reused elsewhere. So let's do that. We'll create a composable, call it my custom checkbox. And what I'm going to do is take the code that we already have up here, copy it, and paste it. And immediately you may realize that we get an error here, that the, there's an unresolved reference for the align modifier. This is really confusing. It works up here. Why doesn't it work down here? And this is something that I think will trip up people who are using Compose for the first time. So let's try to figure out why that is. We can start by doing a command click on the align method to look at the source code. And if we just look at this area, everything looks fine here. It's an extension function on modifier. It takes in an alignment property, specifically vertical alignment, because we're inside of a row. We want to figure out where in, vertically in the row it should be aligned. And then it returns that modifier. So everything seems fine. But if we scroll up just a little bit, we'll notice that this extension function is inside of an interface called row scope. Now, you can go down the rabbit hole to try and understand what a row scope is. But for most intents and purposes, think of it as a way of defining that something exists inside of a row. And all of these modifiers, um, they're actually specific to the behavior of a row. For example, if we look at the weight modifier up here, when we're dealing with a row, which lays things out horizontally, um, that weight impacts the width of the item. But if we had a column that was laying things out vertically, then the weight actually affects the height of the item. So even though the modifier exists in both a row and a column, it will have a different behavior. And so that's why we'll see this scope class or interface come up from time to time. There's row scope, there's column scope, there's box scope, because modifiers will have different behavior in each of these scopes, and some modifiers might not apply to those different scopes. For example, weight, I'm not sure if it would apply to a box, because how do you specify the weight? It's not a linear arrangement of items like a row or a column is. Um, 
So if we go back to our code inside task list item, now we can understand that the reason we can't access this extension function is because we are no longer inside of a row. So that's the problem. But how do we fix it? Well, we have one quick hacky solution, which is we could just add the row scope, modif uh, make an extension function on row scope for our custom checkbox. I don't recommend doing this. Um, it will work. The compiler will be happy. We could replace this with my custom checkbox. Um, but what you've done here is you've now sort of programmed yourself into a corner where your checkbox can only be used inside of a row scope. And we might not always want that inside our projects, right? So instead, let's consider another option, which is we could have our custom checkbox consume its own modifier, and then let whoever is implementing our custom checkbox decide what that modifier will be, and especially if that modifier relates to the scope it's being used in. So we can change my custom checkbox to have a modifier parameter, and instead of specifying that it must be vertical, we can just use that parameter. And that's how we've modified our custom widget. If we go back to our original composable, the task list item, now we can pass in a modifier right here. And we have, because we're in a row scope, the ability to use the um, built-in align modifier. So this is the recommended approach to this sort of problem if you have a custom composable that is going to be used inside of like a row scope or a column scope is to pass in that modifier. Now some of you might not like this approach. You might feel like that's a lot of boilerplate to use over and over and over again. And I agree. If you are going to be using your custom checkbox in a lot of different rows and you're going to be calling it like this, a lot of different times, I agree, that is a lot of boilerplate. But I think it's still justified to make sure that your custom checkbox is completely decoupled from any particular scope. However, I think there's a great opportunity to meet in the middle, which is that we can have our custom checkbox and then put maybe a helper wrapper, helper function around it um, for that specific use case. So we could create a new composable here and we could call it a vertically centered checkbox. And for our vertically centered checkbox, we could be explicit here and say that this is for, in a row, we want a vertically centered checkbox. And then we can take our code from the previous solution and put it inside this function. And then inside our original implementation now, we can just type out vertically centered checkbox. And so this is a good like hybrid approach between having a composable that we pass a modifier to and then still having a helper function that solves most of our use cases where something is appearing in a row over and over again. So I hope you found this helpful. I know this is a very short video, but I think it's a really common question in Jetpack Compose, and hopefully this gives you some ideas on how you might structure your own code base to solve this problem. So do let me know in the comments what you think. I'm really excited to start doing more YouTube videos for all of you, so please like and subscribe, and let me know what you'd like to learn in the future. Thanks.